what I want to do is I want to rewind back about 10 years ago. This is, uh, this is when I, I've been a system administrator for 15 years, and this is when I was a little system administrator. And, and I, worked at, I worked at a place in Kingston. Um, one of the cool things about being a system administrator is we get, com- we get a lot of computers, you know, broken ones. We bring home and we fix them. Uh, <clears throat> so I had a lot of, uh, I had a lot of computers uh, at my house, bringing them home. Girlfriend wasn't too happy about that. Uh, there's, there's one thing that I was trying to do when I got all these computers. I was downloading a lot of movies, a lot of wares, a lot of, you know, like music and stuff like that. And at the time they only had like 200 gig hard drives, hundred gig hard drives, 200 gig hard drive was pretty big and, and expensive back then. So I got all these computers going in a room and, uh, I wanted to make it so that I could access all the computers. Uh, as a distributed system, but make it look like it was in one place. So I only had to go to one place to see my mo- movies or uh, listen to my music or whatever. So I was like, there's not, there wasn't really anything out there that could do that um, on a, from a Linux perspective that I could, or a Windows perspective that I could uh, think of right away. What, what I actually ended up doing was I looked at the way live CDs worked and... Uh, how they, how they merge themselves into memory and make it so that you can actually uh, run uh, a distribution, a Linux distribution, and still write to RAM as if it was part of the file system. That technology is called Union File System or AUFS. Anyhow, I was, uh, I was getting, I, I found a way to make all these computers work together and, prov- and provide me a single point of view for my file system. Uh, there was a few problems with it. It wasn't reliable. If one of the computers went down, uh, I would find myself uh, just missing that data. The stuff, the system would still work. I would just be missing the movies folder or something like that, you know, or my music or part of my music, depending on what part of the the union file system was missing. Anyways, uh, so it wasn't reliable, and it was. I had to do a lot of organizing, so you could only write to one place, uh, one. Uh, server at a time, so it was kind. Of, it was a, it was a lot of micromanagement and stuff like that. So, anyhow, uh, girlfriend and I broke up. I gave her the computers. Came to Montreal, got a new job, and this is ten years after. And uh, the new job, I'm actually uh, working for. I was working for Amuco at the time, helping them build an OpenStack cloud. Uh, actually, before that, I was a Windows administrator. You guys all love us, I bet. Um, but then I got forced on the project, uh, uh, the OpenStack project, and the thing that I was forced to do was uh, learn Ceph. Uh, I was like, I, I don't, I didn't really like the fact that I was, you know, forced into uh, an open source project that I knew nothing about. However, um, as I started to get, you know, started to get into it, I, I realized this was the holy grail of storage. This was everything that I wanted uh, 10 years ago. It's too bad I didn't bring my computers. But uh, I must say, it's pretty awesome, this Ceph stuff. Uh, it's a distributed storage system. It runs, it runs off of something called Rados and Crush. Um, the way I like to view it is Ra- uh, Rados as like, you know, in business, they have policies and procedures. Policies are there to be defined. And then you design procedures to, uh, to commit to policies. So it's like procedures drive your policy. Policy is like the direction you want to go. The way that, that's the way I kind of see uh, Ceph and, and its two, com- two main uh, logical components. Uh, Rados is like the policy. And uh, Crush is like the procedure. The, the way that it goes about defining the, uh, the policy. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what the, uh, the acronym for RADOS stands for. It stands for reliable, autonomic. Autom- autonomic means uh, self-organizing, in case you guys don't know. Uh, D, uh, D is for distributed, and uh, the OS is for object storage. Uh, this is a new technology. It's 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 really awesome. It is reliable. It is self-organizing. It uh, it it allows you to store vast amounts of data. Solves all kinds of storage issues. Uh, so 
anyways, when I was, uh, when I was at Ormuco and I, and I discovered this holy grail of uh, storage, I started playing around with it and I was seeing speeds of like the, the bottleneck, literally, if you got a few SSD drives and a node, the bottleneck on this, on a node is the, is the 10 gigabit network cards. If you've got them bonded or link aggregated, you can see upwards to 20 gigabits per second. So we're talking about very, very fast, reliable uh, storage. And it's, it follows a Linux methodology of do something and do it really well. Uh, I'm, uh, right now, I'm, I'm here just to, I can't really get too deep into it because I only got 20 minutes, but I'm trying to transfer the enthusiasm about this project to, to all of you guys. I don't know, like, if you guys have computers lying around, it's definitely worth picking up and learning. Uh, now, I want to get into Crush. That's how it goes about being reliable, self-organizing. Um, it stands for, Crush stands for... Uh, Wow, better check my notes here. That's uh, it's a little tired today. Crush stands for controlled replication under scalable uh, hashing. If if you it's yeah yeah so hashing is what helps it be uh, helps it be safe and reliable. The uh, the replication also does that. Um, the fact that you ha uh, typically when you start off with a uh, uh, Ceph cluster, you'll have, you'll have a minimum of three control, uh, three, uh, well, no, you're, you're actually, well, typically you'll have five, uh, you'll have six nodes, or if you're just doing it, if you're just doing an experimentation just to check it out, you'll have four, because you're going to have uh, monitors, which keep track of the health of your cluster and tell uh, your clients, whatever's trying to uh, connect and, and pull data from the cluster, it tells the clients where the data is, wh which object storage device your data is on. Um, so you have a monitor. They're in a sets of three. They're in odd numbers because you need to maintain a quorum, which means that uh, you can't have two or an even number because uh, something, uh, something could happen where um, an even amount of servers are down and there's no witnesses to see who's, you know, which, which server has control of the cluster. So that's why you typically want to have three servers. So if an, if an odd number goes down, um, you'll still have, uh, you'll still have uh, quorum. So you could have like, if you have, three, uh, if you have three monitor servers, one can go down and you'll maintain quorum. If two go down, you won't. Uh, your entire cluster will be unusable. Uh, you have storage nodes. They are pretty much just, they just host hard drives. And uh, they have daemons, object storage daemons, called OSDs, that sit on the hard drive. And uh, they are what um, allows you to store all the information, all the vast amounts of information. Ooh. Sorry, I stepped on the cord. Yeah, so um, I also wanted to get into the differences between uh, Ceph and uh, legacy storage like SAN and NAS. Uh, this, I'm sure everybody here knows what a SAN, a storage area network is, or a NAS is, network attached storage. The difference between those two, uh, SAN is, runs at a lower level where you're, you'll, be able to, uh, you'll be able to format uh, a, uh, <laughs> you'll be able to format um, a hard drive uh, as, if, as, if it's, uh, as if it's part of the operating system for a SAN, for a NAS, it's actually uh, formatted the hard drive for you and presented the storage in, through a number of protocols like FTP, server message block. Uh, and so, uh, oh, it looks like it's locked. Um, so those are the, two, those are the two, uh, two main forms of legacy storage. One of the problems with legacy storage is that uh, you, have a, you have a single point of contention. So whenever your, your client wants to talk to your SAN or your NAS, it has to go through a controller. Um, that uh, is typically, it can be 10 gigabits or 100, 100 gigabits, 40 gigabits, usually 40 or, or 10. Um, but that's a single point of contention. So all of your communications to your SAN or your NAS has to go through that point. And it, uh, it's the more storage you add, the, the more of a point of contention that that becomes. 
With Ceph, I like to I like to look at it as terraforming. It's a peer-to-peer -peer protocol. So when your client actually needs to talk to the cluster, it can talk to any of the nodes at the same time. So the, the, the storage capacity and speed scales linearly. You add a storage node, you get, uh, you get 20 gigabits of performance from, that, from the cluster added. Instead of when you add, uh, in legacy systems, you add more uh, storage, it becomes slower. The entire, uh, the entire infrastructure becomes slower. And that's, uh, so that's another thing I wanted to go over. Um, yeah, well, that's that's pretty much about it. That's I, I tried to convey my uh, my enthusiasm to you guys. Do you guys have any questions about Seth? <laughs>